Hi, I'm Alex Guarnaschelli, and welcome to our kitchen. Today we are making tasty honey caraway rolls. These honey caraway rolls are like a cousin to rye bread, right? They've got that, that super rye bready note from the caraway seeds that we know from a great deli sandwich. And they're just so great anywhere. They're great with hummus. They're great to make a little ham sandwich, a little snack. You can cut them up and put them on a cheese tray. The only problem is when you make them, you're gonna struggle not to eat them all hot out of the oven. And believe me, the struggle is real. So let's get baking. So I've got a pack of active dry yeast. And this is exactly two and a quarter teaspoons, which is, which is what we want. So just empty the pack into a, a little bowl, right? You've got that dry yeast. So we're gonna get half a cup of water from the tap and it's gotta be between 110 and 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so we've got that warm water from the tap. Why between 110 and 120, you're saying, right? That is actually the perfect temperature window for yeast to wake up and start blooming. What if it's boiling hot, the water, right? Then the yeast dies, because it's like, oh, this jacuzzi is too hot for me, I'm out. If it's too cold, the yeast doesn't set itself into motion. It just stays napping at the bottom of the bowl. So literally take the temperature of your water with any type of thermometer and you want it to be between 110 and 120. And then pour it right in and pour it over the yeast and down the sides of the bowl so you trap any bits of dried yeast and get them all into the water and submerge. And then just take a fork or a little whisk or something and just give it a little stir until the water becomes kind of murky and cloudy and you see the yeast is starting to dissolve. Take a little nose bath. It should already smell like the beginning of a delicious honey caraway roll. Right now the yeast and the water are like, hey, hi, how are you? Good to meet you. And that's gonna be something we'll come back to in a minute. Now we wanna get all our other ingredients for the rolls mixed together in a mixer. This is just a classic electric mixer with the paddle attachment, which is really good um, for little roll recipes like this. We're gonna start with three cups of bread flour. You definitely just tap gently and cut it with a knife. So you've got an exact cup measure right into the bowl. Now bread flour has a little bit more protein in it. You get a better texture, more gluten development. So you get a more toothy roll than with all purpose flour. Good reason to use it. Also, we always like a little more protein, even if it's in an unexpected place like our bread. Three level cups of bread flour. That's the foundation of the bread dough. Now to that, we're gonna add two teaspoons of caraway seeds. And don't be afraid to kind of sprinkle those in all around. This is what gives it that kind of classic rye bread type of taste. We're gonna add a tablespoon of kosher salt. Sprinkle that in there as well. And now for some of our wet ingredients. And all the while, by the way, your yeast and water, you should see it start to have a few little bubbles on the surface. That's a really good sign. The bowl, when you touch it on the outside underneath, should feel a little bit warm to the touch. Right, so those are two telltale signs that your yeast is off to the races. So we have in here our three cups of bread flour, our tablespoon of salt, and our two teaspoons of caraway seed. And now we're gonna start adding liquid to those dry ingredients. First, olive oil. And if you think about it, this is the only real fat in this recipe other than the cottage cheese and the egg. And the other good thing about the olive oil is it'll grease your spoon. And that helps you when you measure in sticky stuff after, because it won't stick as much. One tablespoon of blackstrap molasses. This is the most intense and bitter form of molasses. And you see how, because we have the oil on the spoon first, the molasses doesn't stick. Just your spoon is still clean. 
Such a good trick. Do your greasy stuff first and then do your sticky stuff next. And it creates more accurate measuring. And then three tablespoons of honey. And I like to use a pretty neutral honey. I mean, you can get a little fun if you like an herb honey. And again, see that clean spoon? Because we started with the olive oil. Such a great tip and so much less messy. So three tablespoons of honey right in there. And this will add just a little bit of sweetness, but it kind of links up with that bitter molasses and creates this wonderful taste with those caraway seeds. I love these rolls with ham in particular. Let me tell you. Little ham sandwich standing in front of your refrigerator by yourself. Oh yeah. It's those, those lone food moments that we love. Now to that, we're gonna add a cup of cottage cheese, full fat, plain. Don't go for the blueberry stuff or anything here. Cottage cheese has a lot of protein, right? Adds a lot, but it also lightens and creates this wonderful texture. So just right in there, one cup. I consider cottage cheese a solid as opposed to a liquid, so I use a solid measure for that. And then just one egg. Right in there. Ooh la la. Now drop it down. We've got a lot of ingredients in here. So we're gonna start nice and slow. Nice and low, nice and easy. On a low setting, we're hanging out. We're watching all these ingredients come together. It's looking good. Okay, so we wanna just mix this on a low speed until all the ingredients, the flour and all those liquids have just come together. It's still a little bit too dry to really come together as a dough, and that's because it's waiting on the addition of this mixture of yeast and water that we began with. Just give it a little stir, just to make sure the yeast is all mixed together. And with the mixer on low, just pour this yeast and water mixture right into the dough mix. Nice and easy. It's right now at this point in the recipe that you're gonna start to smell things. The molasses, a little bit of that honey, the yeast. It's gonna smell right at this moment like dough. And if it means it's dough, we're gonna have to proof it, which means we're gonna have to give it time for all these ingredients to rise, right? So we need somewhere to house that dough, right? I've got a medium-sized bowl. Put a tablespoon of olive oil into the bowl, and just with a brush, brush the bottom and the sides of the bowl, very important. Now, the olive oil, of course, it makes the dough taste better. But more importantly, the reason we oil the bowl is so that as the dough is sitting in here and rising, it doesn't stick to the sides of the bowl, right? Because they're oiled. And that allows it to just keep rising and rising instead of sticking and not being allowed to grow larger in volume. So this oiling the bowl, it's not just for flavor or romantic reasons. It's also so that the dough can fully rise freely in the bowl. And we're gonna let this dough rise for about one and a half to two hours, or until it just about doubles in size. Now that's that telltale sign, right? When the dough's like, you hear the mixer kind of bumping along, you can just feel that the dough has come together and it's ready. Clear a little space. Totally normal, by the way, when you're cooking, to need to clear stuff, right? So we have our bowl ready and our dough. Ooh la la. It's okay if it's sticking to the paddle. Don't worry about that. Take the bowl off. Get a spatula or something so you can get the rest of the dough off the paddle because we want all of this. We want to eat this. You can use your hands, you can use a spatula, whatever you're more comfortable with. The dough should be pretty sticky and it should smell good.
just smell like something you want to eat already. Like you might eat a little of this raw. I mean, it's not exactly cookie dough, but close. Scrape down the sides a little bit. Right, we're gonna start to gather this dough into a ball. You can do this with your hands or you can do it with a spatula. Now at this point, I wanna lift the dough up out of the bowl and into its little oil bath, right? So I'm actually gonna flour my hands a little bit. Feel free to do that so that your hands don't stick. And then use that flour covered hand to just lift the dough right up out of there and right in our bowl with the olive oil. Beautiful. Looks so good. Okay. And now, I'm just gonna cover it with a towel, leave it by the stove where it's kind of warm, and let this double in volume. It should take about an hour and a half to two hours. Now's a good time to pause, and when we come back, we'll punch down that dough, roll, bake, and eat. All right, so here we are. And, and you know, bread dough is a process, right? I've been letting this dough, and so have you, proof for about, I don't know, almost two hours, right, in our oiled bowl. And you can see it's, it's doubled in volume. That's what we're looking for. But this is only our first proof. First rising, put a little flour on my hands, just a little bit so your hands never stick. And just essentially press down the dough. Some people like to punch it. No need to be violent. Just press some of that air out. You can even pull it a little bit from the sides of the bowl to make sure that it's not sticking too much. We're gonna cover it and let it rise again for another hour. And again, near the oven where it's warm in your kitchen is helpful. No need for direct sunlight or anything. Just wherever it's kind of warm in your kitchen is helpful. So I know you're gonna pause here and let your dough proof another hour, but I'm gonna keep on going with another batch of dough that has already risen for that second time. So for the second rise, we don't necessarily get another doubling in volume, but it's definitely gotten some more puff out of it again. Just take a minute to smell the dough. I know we haven't cooked it yet, we haven't formed the rolls, but it's still really delicious smelling. I have two trays. We're gonna make eight larger rolls with this. Just to get ready, we're gonna again brush a little bit of olive oil on the bottom of two baking sheets. We're gonna make eight rolls. We're only gonna put four rolls on each baking sheet. We're gonna give a lot of room in between each. That's gonna allow for more browning and not so much steaming, right? Because we wanna get a nice crust on these rolls. And this is so fun. It's like finger painting, right? So we have our second baking sheet, a little bit of oil, just enough to grease the, the bottom surface. We're not gonna go up on the sides of the baking sheet, so don't worry about it. So satisfying to make your own bread like this. And again, these rolls, I mean, from a cheese tray to some sandwiches, even on the table as dinner rolls for something extra special, so good. Okay, two oiled baking sheets kind of hanging out nearby in the wings and our dough that is proofed for a total of almost three hours. We proofed it for an hour and a half, almost two hours, pressed the air out of it, proofed it again for another hour, and now we're ready to roll. What do we need to roll bread, really? Or roll dough, right? Not much. A clean, flat surface, some extra flour so that the dough doesn't stick as we're rolling it. I like a little bench scraper, one of these guys, just to cut the bread into pieces and scrape up. You can also use a chef's knife if you don't have one of these. No biggie. Just on the surface and then turn the dough out. Nice and easy. You see, because of that olive oil, your dough will just slide right out neatly, right out of that bowl. So satisfying. Okay. Now this dough has had quite a workout already, so there's no need to overwork it here either. 
cut it in what looks like about half to you with the bench scraper or a chef's knife. You can even put your flour in something big enough and dip that bench scraper or knife in flour to make cleaner cuts and prevent it from sticking. It took me a long time to learn that one. And then just cut the dough, imagining that we're gonna make eight rolls. Just cut it in eight pieces, okay? So we're ready. Our oven is preheated at 400 degrees. So we wanna start these rolls off really in a hot, hot oven. And then we're gonna lower it. We've got two greased baking sheets. We've got a lot of real estate to cook these rolls. You're just gonna take them just gently. Make sure you're not wearing a navy blue or dark sweater when you're making recipes with tons of flour. Just give it a little roll. Mmm, <laughs> I'm already hungry. This looks like it's a little bit big. If it looks like you didn't break them all evenly, by the way, you can tear off a little piece of dough and give it to a smaller one. Don't worry about being perfect. Just gently roll a little bit. You see we've got a little bit of flour, which keeps the rolls from sticking. If your hands start to stick, gently dip your hands in the flour. Do you see how I'm just kind of kneading them and making them a little bit round? Like steering wheel, same, same kind of feeling. They don't have to be perfectly round, close enough. I like when homemade bread has that kind of hand rolled vibe, you know, a little uneven, a little crooked, you know, a little bless your heart. Do you see how I'm pressing a little bit as I roll too? Just to make it a little round? Gently. See that? And then again with the rest. And actually that oil we use to coat the bowl really helps you out here. You don't need that much flour. Use a little bit to keep it from sticking, but don't use too much flour or your bread will be doughy and covered with flour when you take them out. We don't need that. There's enough flour already in here, right? So fun. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. Okay, look at that. So, we have our eight rolls, all rolled and ready to go on our oiled baking sheets. The oven is preheated to 400 degrees. We're gonna put these rolls, these two trays, in the oven, and then we're gonna lower the temperature to 300 and bake them for 22 to 25 minutes. We just wanna start in an oven that's a little bit hotter to give it that chance to really puff up and get baking and give it that nice crust, but then actually cook them only at 300. So in the oven we go, and when we come back, we're gonna taste them. So here are our rolls, so exciting. Hot out of the oven. You can see they've got a nice brown crust on top. A Little bit of that baked crust even underneath them. And I like to just put them together in a little basket, even if I just eat the whole thing myself after. It's a nice idea for presentation. Um, I'm just putting them all kind of in a circle around each other and you could put a little bit of olive oil or butter, kind of a little partial to butter here. So we've got, look at that, our little basket of rolls and it's kind of cool. I mean, you take a step back for a minute and you look at what you achieved. Yeah, this is totally something that we often just buy at the store, a pack of rolls. These are homemade, we made them. Very important, you know, we didn't talk about it. A little bit of room temp butter just to have around. I even put a little sea salt on my butter, a little coarse sea salt, and just pop that right in the middle of the basket for tearing and smearing. Delicious. All right, so all that's left is for us to taste and see if this roll is as good as it looks. Great tear, great smell inside of that caraway. That's what really reminds me of the rye bread, right? Little piece, touch of butter, gotta have it. 
A little bit of that sea salt on top if you like. This is great with olive oil, cheese, in a sandwich, whatever. Mmm. Oh, yeah. If you are tasting these along with me, mmm. Do you get that little bit of bitter from the molasses and sweetness from the honey? This would be a great dinner roll as is. You could cut them open, make a great little sandwich with them. I love the texture of the caraway, the flavor of them, the bits of honey and molasses with the sea salt and the butter. Sign me up. This is delicious.